today we'll be talking about some new stuff that is quantum computing uh, so I'm not really diving into all the mathematics of quantum mechanics today uh, but today it's basically going to be understanding quantum mechanics on a very high level I'm sorry quantum computing on a very high level for computer engineers you can say so so you must have heard about QC that is quantum computing and you must have also heard about the fact that quantum computers are faster than classical computers right and uh, so the question that comes up which is very obvious is that uh, what do you mean by faster I mean why is it faster and how much faster is it right so I'm going to give an example so <clears throat> you can think of this uh, scenario where you have a bag and uh, in that bag you have n items okay and you have to search for a particular item inside that bag now our classical thinking goes like somewhat like that uh, so okay so the items are unordered right you don't you don't know the order of the items or there is no order in the items like the smallest are the first one then uh, medium then larger there is no order like that it's an order so what are you gonna do you're gonna check each of the items from the bag and uh, go for searching until you get the one you're looking for so that's what the classical search algorithm goes for in case of unordered search now if I'm gonna tell you that in quantum computing paradigm you have an algorithm that says Grover's algorithm and it can search faster now how much faster so in case of classical algorithm you're going to search for n elements right and you can think of it as the time needed as n time units okay and in case of this Grover's algorithm you're going to consume root over n time steps okay now I'm going to say how is it like so root over n is a good acceleration right so in case of a classical algorithm it, it is taking say 100 time steps in quantum computing you are getting a 10, 10 time steps and you are solving the same problem which is a quite a good acceleration if it is a 10,000 in the classical algorithm you are going to get acceleration of 100 times right because you are going to take 100 time steps in Grover's algorithm now the fact is that when we try to think this very much classically the constraint is that you have to go and look for each of the items which is pretty obvious and that is at least going to take n time steps but there is some algorithm you are saying that is solving the same thing in root over n time how is that possible right this is the counter intuitiveness you can say in quantum paradigm so let's understand how it works actually what is the trick so uh, performance in classical like in classical algorithm so basically the performance unit is uh, the transistors right so the transistor are either charged or not when it is charged we say that the bit is set otherwise not and you use this bit as computational unit so if we consider like we have n classical bits and if we assume that we have uh, a performance of one unit per classical bit for n classical bits we are getting a n performance like n bit performance or n unit performance you can say it is quite linear that is like you have n bits so the performance is equal to n units right so what happens in quantum computing okay so you have to learn about qubits first we are not learning them I just am discussing what they are actually so in quantum computing we use qubits so you must have heard about photons right photons are basically particles you can think of like in classically we are using qubits like uh, transistors and in quantum paradigm we are using qubits these qubits are very much like photons okay they are not exactly photons I don't know how we are going to implement it 
but they are quantum mechanical bits and they have this property this strange quantum mechanical property that is called spin okay alert it's not this spin okay it's a intrinsic spin that hasn't yet been discovered so don't try to think of it as something rotating but yeah we say that we have a angular momentum of that particle and that's why we are calling it spin now the thing is that uh, whenever you uh, for a photon whenever you measure the spin of a particle or a photon it is either, either zero i mean it, it is either up or down okay just like the transistors it is either set or not set so the same equivalent thing right in case of qubit you are going for a spin rather than charge so what happens is that there is a important catch here that in classical world uh, it's very obvious that doesn't matter whether you know or not if a transistor is charged it is charged okay it's not going to change but in case of quantum paradigm as schrodinger's cat the, the thing goes like until you measure the cat is both alive and dead right and it's pretty much same with the quantum bits so until you measure them until they have been measured they are uncertain and they are in a overlap of 0 and 1 for 0 you can think of like 0 is spin up and 1 is spin down okay so either they are spin up or spin down so how is it going to help us now see there are multiple interpretations okay so i find this particular interpretation very much useful to understanding quantum computing the performance speed up okay that's why i'm going to use that interpretation so what that interpretation interpretation says is that let's think of a coin okay so before you toss you don't know what is the outcome going to be right so you can say there is a 50 50 percent chance of getting a head and a tail if it is an unbiased coin so in case of qubit also you have a probability of getting either spin up or spin down not necessarily 50 percent okay it depends on the qubits and the operations applied on the qubits but okay it's on overlap once you measure it it becomes either one or zero because, up, because after that it's not going to change okay it's like you have there is a proof that it is zero and you can't just change that okay but before you change it it's an overlap of zero i mean spin up and spin down okay so what is the interpretation it says that when you say that a qubit or any quantum me mechanical particle is an overlap of multiple states by state i mean spin up is one state and spin down is one state okay so how you interpret it it's like we call it a multiverse interpretation okay it says that we have multiple universes and each of the universes are representing one of the state of the qubit now think of one qubit that is not measured yet and so basically that bit can be either spin up or spin down so think of one universe where it is spin up and the other universe where it is spin down now it is our consciousness that is going to land up in one of the universes and that is what we are uh, illusioned as collapsing of the quantum wave function the wave function is basically a superposition of the spin up and spin down just in vanilla words like you can have both of them simultaneously okay that state that that uh, superposition state is going to collapse at some point of time that is what they, this interpretation in interpretation says now the question is that okay a lot of talk but how is that going to help in understanding the acceleration in quantum computing now the catch is that when you are using n classical bits you are getting a performance of n units we remember that right which is pretty obvious now in case of quantum bits what is going to happen is that uh, think of the that the bits are in two universes okay but you are applying the operation whatever operation in the circuit so there are quantum circuits right you apply gate on them just like in electric circuit electronic circuit so you're going for different quantum mechanical gates and on that so you're basically having the operations done on them and the thing is that the effect of that 
like those gates and all is going to go to both the universes okay so whenever you go about affecting the wave function of the qubit i'm saying wave function because it is not yet measured right so it is not measured that means it's in two universes and you are going to affect both of them that is basically like you are computing in both the world okay so here the thing is that we are getting a inherent parallelism with quantum computing when you are using qubits we are getting a inherent parallelism without using 100 cores gpus okay now that is the thing so you are not using gpus and you are getting a inherent parallelism now when you measure the qubit okay you will say that okay uh, i am measuring the qubit say i i so this universe and this universe okay i i get it spin up which was in the first universe so my consciousness is landing on the first one you will say okay but i am not getting into the other universe right so why is the speed up the thing is that when you measure it okay the information is going to channel from both the universes okay to that particular point but the measurement is going to occur again this is just a interpretation or for your understanding but under the hood if you go for the mathematics okay you can say that both the states have a contribution towards the final measurement okay the thing is that we are getting information from two channels for one bit right so when the final information comes in it comes in, comes in from both the channels okay so that's where the information is doubled and we want information much information means much computation and okay so that's fine but what will happen okay let's understand what will happen if we use two qubits qubit 1 and qubit 2 so there are four possible states okay uh one is the so basically there are four possible states means you can think of four possible universes for that bit okay and the universe is so, so in the first universe you are getting going to get uh both the qubits are zero in the second one both of them are one in the third one it's zero one in the fourth one it is one zero it's just like normal permutation of all possible qubits of two length right that is 2 to the power n so if you have n qubits you can have total 2 to the power n possible states from it okay now each of the states we are going to use if we develop some good algorithm we are going to use all of them to get the information so the final information gain is 2 to the power n while in case of classical computers we are going to get only n informations so the information speed up is here you see in case of classical bits if you use same amount of classical bits and qubits you are going to get n information in the classical part and 2 to the power n information in the quantum part so that is where the speed up is now coming to the final words so you might be asking okay that that's pretty cool but what is like why don't we use it then okay the first thing is that they are pretty expensive okay uh, ibm has this facility they give on like free qubits but you have to sit in a queue a uh, bit you can go to like a uh, search on google uh, ibm q cloud I ibm qubits basically and you can get a uh, an sign in account and you will be provided a token and you can use those qubits from cloud connection but the problem is that those qubits uh, so basically you know in macro world you cannot so those qubits need to be isolated right and the temperature that is needed to isolate them is not normal temperature for that you need like very sensitive machineries and uh, superconductors that's why they are very very uh, expensive next is that the thing is that whatever software is running currently okay they are the code or the source code of them are built up on classical logic so we assume that we are using classical circuits okay and that is a problem why we can't really migrate from 
classical domain to quantum computing domain okay you have to change each of the algorithms and each of the codes and source codes to get the migration done which is a very big like <laughs> very hard stuff and the final one is that you are not going to get a speed up for each of the like all algorithms right because the thing is that okay you are going to get information of 2 to the power n uh, exponential information in uh, quantum computing but you have to utilize it okay the better algorithms you use the better speed up is there like the more speed up is there and also uh, it's only specified for some particular stuffs okay uh, if you go about into learning quantum computing you will you will understand this constraints i am not also aware of all the constraints a few only but there are some constraints like no cloning theorem it's like you can't copy a quantum bit and all so there are some stuff there the thing is that it's not specialized for each of the task so if you today you say okay i want to develop a linux kernel that will learn on quantum core you are not going to get a get a speed up in each of the operations even it might occur that in some operations you are going to get a speed down okay so it's better in today's architecture it's better to uh, you know use everything in cloud okay sign into ibm import uh, install qiskit in your python jupyter notebook or whatever environment you are in try to connect it try to run one or two algorithms i think that will uh, that is better i guess because uh, it's everything so you can't really buy everything you have to use the cloud services okay so that's what uh, pretty much the discussion for today was uh, tell me in the comment section how it was how i can improve this uh, youtube videos uh, i am actually uh, recording my first uh, like face to face youtube video so thank you for watching please like and share <laughs> if you liked it comment thank you